Hi, how are you guys doing? My name is Masai with Paradigm Youth and College Ministry and this is our first video blog or uh, video message that we're going to be doing uh, once a week and it's just going to be a three to five minute video that we're going to be posting both on our website, uh, on YouTube, as well as on Facebook. Uh, and this is just to help us stay connected with a lot of our members uh, and students that are not here uh, in LA uh, for school reasons or work reasons. If you've moved away, this just kind of helps us uh, stay connected. And also for some of you that have been asking to see if we have any of our services, Sunday morning services on, on videos, um, we're not there yet. We're in the process of making that happen, but until we get there, I think um, this is going to serve as a helpful uh, resource. And so if you've got any uh, questions or, or any topics that you want us to discuss in these video uh, messages, please shoot myself an email uh, or message me on Facebook or contact us on our website, and we'll love to cover that. Uh, and by no means this is to say we've got all the answers and you don't or anything like that. Uh, this is just, again, a tool that we want to use uh, to help one another grow in this beautiful journey that God has called us in. And so if you've got... Uh, questions, just please uh, uh, message us and we'll see uh, if we could cover it. Uh, and so for today, we're going to look from a, a scripture uh, and, and it's going to be from Matthew chapter 13, verse 3. Um, this is a story of the sower and the seed, or, or the seed and the sower, but I think as the scripture perfectly uh, puts it, it's the parable of the sower. Uh, and I know my cousin that lives in Dallas uh, a few weeks ago asked me, uh, about this topic, but but I failed to get back to you, and I'm so sorry about that. And so next time I, I, I'm in Dallas, I owe you lunch. Uh, but anyways, let's go. Let's go to the the text. It says, then he told them he is referring to Jesus. So then Jesus told many things and parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang. Up quickly because the soil was shallow. And then it says in verse 6, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds uh, fell among thorns, which grew up um, and, the choke, the, the, and it choked the plants. And then in verse 8, it says, still others fell on the good soil where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times more than what was sown. He who's got ears, let him hear. Now, this is a text, uh, uh, like I said earlier, that I think a lot of us have heard from. Uh, even myself, you know, not only have I heard this being taught so many times, but I've preached from, uh, from this scripture so many times. But it's amazing how the word of God is because every time you read it, you learn something from it uh, that shows, uh, you know, this is not just a written word of God, but this is the living word of God. It's so amazing. There isn't a single verse in here that you think you've just memorized and, and you've got it in your head and you, you know it. But each time you read it, it's just, you learn something from it. And so a few weeks back, I was in a service and I was sitting towards the back and, and a friend of mine was, was delivering a message from this text. And so as he was reading and he was having us read this text, um, my critical thinking mind went off a little bit. And so I was thinking in my head, um, why is it? Because again, the story in here is, is kind of uh, vivid. And so when I, I was just imagining what was going on. And so I thought to myself, why is it that this farmer is going around sown seed in places that he knows is not going to produce or reproduce. And so I concluded in my thinking, again, this is not to, trying to be sacrilegious or anything, this is just a thought that snuck into my head. And so I thought to myself, this farmer must not be that wise for him to go around and sow seeds in all these wrong places because if it was me, I wouldn't waste my time sowing seeds in the pathways or in the rocky ways or in the thorny uh, areas, but I would just make sure I sow the seeds on the right soil. And so as I thought that, the Spirit of the Lord taught me something profound and that's what I want to share with you. And that is that God doesn't see in this text, the sower uh, represents Jesus. Um, and the seed represents the things of God or the ways of God or the words of God. And, and the soil represents me and you, uh, or the ground on which the seed is being sowed represents me and you. Now, many times this scripture is used uh, regarding money. Now, I'm not talking about money because context-wise, this is talking about the will of God uh, and the word of God. And so that's what I want to talk to you about. So the the farmer represents Jesus, the seed represents the things of God, the ways of God, and, and the words of God, and the soil or the ground in which it lands on represents you and I. And so the question most of the time that me and you ask is, which one of those soils am I? And that's a great question to ask. But before you get there, I think there's something that me and you need to see. And so again, my question is, this farmer must not be that wise for him to go around sowing seed in all the wrong places. And as I thought that, the Lord showed me something 
amazing that have helped me. And that is that God doesn't sow or God doesn't touch or God doesn't speak every time you're perfect. See, he's willing to speak even when you're not perfect because some of us could disqualify ourselves and say, you know what, God can't speak to me, God can't talk to me because I am a mess, I'm not the good soil. I've got a lot of thorny things that come and, and choke up the things that God has done in my life or I've got um, you know, things in me that are just not rooted so that when, whenever God is trying to deposit something in me, uh, it just dies and so you've disqualified yourself and you would say, God will never speak to me. But at that, I want to remind you in this text, see, the sower didn't wait for the right ground to go sow. But the sower went out and sowed in all these places because this is the picture God is trying to relate to us is that he doesn't speak to you just when you've got it all perfect. He speaks to you regardless of who you are, what you are, what you've done. He's never, never late. He's never... Um, anti speaking to you he's always willing to come and speak to you regardless of where your life is and so that's what i want to encourage you is don't you dare disqualify yourself because god is willing to speak god is willing to touch god is willing to sow in you even if you feel you're thorny or your life represents the pathway and the rocky uh, road um, and so that's the first thing that i want us to look at and the second thing of course this is not just about sowing this is also about growing. See that the reason it's so important for you to identify which soil you are is not to identify God is only gonna sow in my life only when I'm good, no. The reason your life needs to represent the good soil is so that whatever God sows can grow because God doesn't just sow for the sake of sowing, which he does, but God also sows so that it would grow and it would grow because the scripture says this, God causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. See, God's grace is, is both to the saint and to the sinner. Uh, you know, it's for the good and for the evil. You know, he's just gracious to all. But if you want his grace to grow inside of you, then you've got to make sure that you are the right soil. And so two things we've learned. One is God sows into your life when, it, when you're good and when you're bad. It doesn't matter. But two is if you want what God is sowing into you to grow, then you've got to be the, the right soil. And so I hope you learned something from that scripture. Uh, and this is our first video blog. And again, if you've got any questions or whatever, just uh, shoot us an email. We'd love to get to you uh, with your questions. All right, we love you guys. Take care. And uh, thank you for joining us in this video blog. See ya. Come on. I was driving in my car last night. Radio up and came to a stoplight. Had a man who came up to my window and asked for a dollar cause he was in a tight jam.